One of the best parts of doing archaeology in the South Georgia Low Country is the home cooking. So we're gonna go right in here into a place called Bay South and check out if it has as good a southern cooking as Southern Girls had, which was the name of the place here last time I was in Statesboro. Played a mini uh, show out here for the college and uh, eating a lot of good food. So we're going to see what's inside. So we're uh, here at Bay South Southern Restaurant in Statesboro, Georgia. Got the meatloaf and the uh, special recipe gravy with the mashed potatoes and the green bean casserole and the strawberry shortcake all for $6.95. And uh, Richard got his, his, his he, he chose his a little differently there. Yep, but uh, Black eyes, rice and gravy, macaroni and cheese, and storage there. I weigh 67. Uh, uh, Got to get some get some fuel to go trekking through the wilderness. We'll be back with y'all in a minute after we finish this delicious meal. Okay, what we have here is the skeleton of a mosasaur. We're at the museum at Georgia Southern University. That's the head of the mosasaur, and we are going down the length of it. It's a pretty big mosasaur, huh? Now, right next to it, with its tail up in the air, we have the skeleton of a vogel whale. Or a vogel whale. Do you see much difference? Mainly the biggest difference is that the Mosasaur is bigger. Now, according to Eugene McCarthy of the University of Georgia, whales evolved straight from Mosasaurs, not from mammals. So, what do you think? Let's go around and see what mainstream science has to say about it. Although the skeleton of the Vogel whale is remarkably complete, several bones were not found. To create a realistic mounted skeleton of Georgiacetus, we use bones from other fossil whales to fill in the missing parts. The bones on the picture shown below are color-coded to show how we recreated the mount. There's the, in the yellow we have the cast of original bones of Georgia, Georgiacetus. The reddish brown is modeled from 40 million year old whale fossils from South Carolina. Um, the darker purplish color is modeled after Egyptian fossils of Dorodon Atrox, a close relative of Basilosaurus, and the 47 million year old Rhodocetus Balochistatin, I don't know what that, something in Pakistan, but he was just telling me about that. Um, uh, cast of the legs and feet of the extinct whale Rhodocetus, the ankle bone or Astragalus, 
of Rhodocetus is remarkably similar to that of the hippopotamus and is evidence that hippos are the closest living relatives of whales. Cast of 36 million year old fossil of Zygoriza caucho, another close relative of Belosaurus. Okay, the hip bone is similar to a hippo and that's what is proving that the ancient primitive whales are close to land mammals, but how is it different than the Mosasaur? That's the question. What makes it more like a hippo than like a Mosasaur? Because this looks a whole lot like a Mosasaur to me. And that's what Eugene McCarthy says too. Um, if you look at the other side, you can see how this goes. If you look, there's a timeline right here. Mosasaurs, Mastodons, and Evolution. You can see the formation of the coastal plain in Georgia right there, 145 to 65 million years. Um, between that and 65 million years, you got Mosasaurs, and then you got the Paleocene, and then here comes the Vogel Whale. Now here's the thing that people don't tell you, that little tiny gap between Paleocene and Eocene, there aren't many fossils of anything. And um, just because we don't find fossils for Mosasaurus for a little while, and then all of a sudden we start finding fossils of Vogel Whale, that doesn't necessarily mean that the Mosasaurus went distinct and, and then the Vogel Whale all of a sudden evolved. It might mean that Guess what? We just are having a period where the whole world doesn't have much fossils because we went through a K2 event, K, K, a KY event, or you know the there's a there's a period right there that ended the reign of the dinosaurs, Y2K event, and all fossils went uh, very rare for that period of time. Now, I'm not saying that, um, that Eugene McCarthy is definitely right, but I think it's very interesting that you got it, the part of the UGA college system, you got two skeletons back to back, and it just kind of uh, shows the question for itself. Convergent evolution or maybe a slightly different path of evolution than what we've been taught. Um, The thing is, The Origin of Species is a very broad book that's written over many different time periods and many different species. Today, we've got people specializing in very, very small areas. So, you know, the Mosasaur people don't even talk very much to the primitive whale people because they're in totally different departments, totally different, different disciplines. And so we don't have anybody really trying to uh, look at the broad picture of evolution anymore. Everybody's looking at the finite pieces and they're not seeing the forest for the trees, possibly. You know, a lot of people will look at Eugene McCarthy's work and immediately assume creationism. This isn't creationism. It still follows the basic pattern set forth in the origin of species is just that maybe we got it a little wrong uh, about the whole grand scheme of things. I have to study it more to find out if that's true, but just a hypothesis. We're going to look at Eugene McCarthy's theories in our blog and in some more videos, so hope you'll stick around and check out more videos. Yeah, the more I look at this, the more I realize that these two creatures are from the same evolutionary line. Eugene is right. I mean, come on. The only reason Darwin didn't recognize this is because he didn't have these fossils. If, um, if uh, Darwin had have had these two fossils staring at him obviously in the face, he would have said, Moses R's evolved into whales. The every single bone on the hand from the forearm, the elbow to the hand is exactly the same. Look at that.
it's just longer but the shapes are the same they both have the two flared forearm bones same way this is convergent evolution come on Thankful for the shade we got now. So yeah, I suppose a river once ran through here. Is that the case? Do you think, Richard? It's the dune because this was you're talking about way back in um, the. You're, well, you're saying this is way, you know, like uh, millions of years ago when this area was actually submerged underwater? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, when it receded. Oh, okay. So, no, the, this wouldn't be a river. It seems so much like a channel. Because if it's a river... Yeah, I see it. It's got a tumor. See, we're we're still following this river, this river that maybe was cut off from the. Well, one way we can tell is Richard, how old? What's the oldest tree you've seen down in this little gully here? Not over a hundred. Every tree in that gully seems to be no more than a hundred years old or so. I'm sure this was a waterway. I mean, I'm not sure, but I think that this was uh, very possibly a waterway that existed before that grist mill was made. And that means fossils and artifacts. Filming a little bit more of this slough we found at the end of the trail here. And this trail winds along the side of this groove in the earth, and we're really wondering if this could be an old riverbed. It makes sense, it may not even be that old of a riverbed because that grist bill is up here, and maybe uh, some of the waterways actually got shut off. Now, this is an actual old river uh, system or a tributary of the Geechee or the Savannah River and it was wet only a few hundred or a few thousand years ago then there are certain to be fossils all along the banks and even in the bed maybe even artifacts <laughs> 